Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome back, it's Mia. And today I wanna talk a little bit about Breaking Bad because it is officially the 15 year anniversary as of January the 20th. So I figured this was perfect timing because I just finally finished watching the series after all this time. Now just as a disclaimer, I'm gonna keep this spoiler free for the beginning and then I have to talk about spoilers because it's just that good. But as far as spoiler free talk goes, Technically, this is not my first time that I've watched Breaking Bad. I actually started watching it right as season five was airing or as it was wrapping up back in like 2013. I was in college and it was just getting so much buzz that I was like, okay, why not watch it? Unfortunately, I think just because I was in college, I fell off. So I'm pretty sure I made it. I had to look at it. I made it to like season three, episode 10, and there's only 13 episodes per season, so I don't know why I quit. Seriously, it, it was such a great series. I think time just got in the way. And so two things have made me want to go back and rewatch it. Number one has been the buzz around Better Call Saul. Uh, just mainly because as I was watching it, Saul was my absolute favorite character from day one. So I was like, I have to see this series, but I want to finish Breaking Bad first before I go into Better Call Saul, because I know they're gonna set up a lot of stuff that's gonna require you to have known everything that happened in Breaking Bad. This is probably a great time for a little sidebar here. Such a huge uh, Saul fan uh, that one day, okay, let me back up. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was taking classes at the Second City, and I believe this was like my first week there. And it was just kind of weird because there was a lot of buzz going on in the halls and between people. And all I heard was people were like, OMG, Bob Odenkirk is here. And I was like, he what? I don't even think I really spoke to anyone. It was just kind of like, yeah, he's like in the offices or something like that. He's, he's poking his head around here. He's like, oh my gosh, he's here right now. Oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? Needless to say, did not get to see him. That was so sad. I went, and you're, you're there for like almost three hours in that building. And I was like, oh my gosh. So next time I gotta make it up. Let me, wait, let me show you something. As proof, this is my second city training certificate. So I am a certified comedian based on the good people at the second city. So that's what's been sitting back there. I kind of deserve to meet Bob Odenkirk now, you know, just kind of comedian to comedian. But that all aside, the second reason why I wanted to see Breaking Bad was because I think the whole buzz surrounding this show recently, it's just been insane. It's kind of weird because back then when the show was first coming out or just finished coming out, there were memes that were based on the gags of the show. So pizza on the roof, the part with the guy laying on the stack of money and always having breakfast. Like those, the jokes were the jokes. Now it's kind of like Breaking Bad has evolved into becoming a reaction meme where you can just kind of take any moment from the show and make it a reaction to literally everything. And I think it's hilarious. And I think it's kind of funny that the characters themselves have basically become memes. I mean, Gus, Mike for sure, Hank, Walter, Jesse, Saul, all of them have basically become these big memes, but also the wonderful part about that is people aren't making fun of Breaking Bad because it's cringe or it's, it's funny because it's bad. I think the show is so good that it has just become this wealth or treasure trove of moments to borrow. And so it's just kind of been this perfect little material for the internet, you know, to pick. And I just think it's wonderful. So before I get into it, my spoiler free review of Breaking Bad. Seriously, if you have not watched this, you definitely have to. It is a must watch. So, so tempted to say that it is probably one of the best TV shows on television, if not like the best show. Let's be honest here. It's some really, really great writing. And I might just say the only downside is that it is a product of its time, right? It came out in 2008. And so, this was a time where good TV was just beginning to happen. It was right on the fringe of that before we had the streaming boom and all that. So it being a product of its time, there are some episodes that you would consider filler. Nowadays, if you watch something like House of the Dragon or Stranger Things, there's really not gonna be any filter. No episode goes wasted. Everything is kind of building up to the action. So you may come across that and find some moments are a bit slower in Breaking Bad, but I think all of the exciting moments, all of the moments that do actually have the payoff and all that good stuff, totally 100% makes up for it. So it is definitely a must watch. And for us who have seen it, I am gonna get into the spoiler talk now. So 
let's get started. So yeah, it was so awesome getting to come back to this series. And I really wanted to kind of speed run through all the episodes I had already seen just so I can get to the new stuff and to Better Call Saul. But it was fun just getting to relive all of that and slowly remember like bit by bit what was happening. And my gosh, I think out of all of the seasons, to me, season two has to be my favorite as far as writing. And I think number one, the big thing that stands out is the whole like floating eyeball thing in the pool, right? That they started out like right from the, the, the first moment in season two. And you're wondering like, what the heck is going on? Like they're setting up something, basically setting up your expectations to think that something horrible was going to happen maybe to either Walt or Jesse or definitely at the White House. So it's kind of like, oh my gosh, things are going to escalate so quickly to the point that things just go completely AWOL. And I um, I kind of forgot the twist at the end. All I knew was that you don't get any payoff until the very last episode. And so the whole time I'm watching thinking like, oh no, 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 we're going to get some payoff soon. We're going to get some payoff. And I'm like, girl, no, you're not getting any payoff until the end of the season. And that's exactly what happened. Now, I recently did read some comments where people were like, eh, the reveal about the eye being from the teddy bear that dropped from the plane was kind of disappointing. I think maybe because they built up your expectations so high thinking like, are Walt and Jesse gonna die? Is something gonna happen in their house? So I do understand that criticism, but I guess when you look at it, some people were saying it's a great metaphor. Some people like it signifies the moment where Walt turns into Heisenberg or it kind of shows how this chain of events unfolded all because of Walt, right? Like he goes into Jesse's house, he sees Jane dying, he doesn't intervene. Now Jane is dead, her father's distraught. The father's so distraught that when he goes to work, he can't focus, that causes the gigantic airplane crash and now that kind of tumbles over into season three. So it does have some pretty big ramifications, but I was like, yeah, I can see how people were pretty disappointed with that. The other big thing to me in season two that to me made it such great writing was that tragic story between Jesse and Jane. Like I knew what was gonna happen with that, that I 100% remembered, but just seeing it all over again, kind of just, I don't know, it made it sad. I definitely cried watching that, y'all. I cried watching that because it was so good. It was so beautifully tragic, if you want to say. And so I couldn't help but get emotional again. I'm sorry. <laughs> The other thing that I wanted to talk about was this relationship between Walt and Jesse, because coming into this, I took a break for about nine years. And when you start seeing the memes, there's all this, you know, Jesse, we need to cook. And, you know, yo, Mr. White, like stuff like that, where you're like, oh, haha, ha, they're such good friends. They're such a great duo. But then as I was watching it, I was like, wow, these guys really don't spend that much time together. Or really when they do, they're not even amiable with one another. They're always like on thin ice, or they're in separation. So it was a little heartbreaking for me, not gonna lie, to realize that like the romanticized version of the duo of Jesse and, and Walter White wasn't what I thought it was gonna be in this series. Like, you know, they're always high-fiving and teaming up and it was very much completely the opposite. But I think it was also disheartening as well because I was like, oh my gosh, Walter isn't really a great guy, is he? He's really kind of an anti-hero here and you know, he's always a class A jerk to, to Jesse. And so I guess in a sense though, it's good writing because you do get to show his descent from being, you know, lovable old Mr. White to, to basically the final boss version of Heisenberg when we get to season five. But let's talk about Jesse because Jesse really received the bad end of the stick on a lot, a lot of times, took a lot of huge L's and specifically like with Walter, I mean, Walt was constantly gaslighting him, belittling him, talking down to him. And then the next moment he's like, you know, begging on his knees, like, Jesse, come back. I need you. Let's cook. Da, 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 da. And so it's like, oh my gosh, poor Jesse. It's like even the part where Walt, you know, began to have intentions on killing Jesse. I was like, no, <laughs> we were brothers, Anakin. Not that they were brothers. I'm sure, Heisenberg is kind of like the Anakin to Darth Vader descent, but I don't, they never had that close of a relationship. They just spent a lot of time with one another. So yeah, I wasn't, aside from that, I wasn't really a huge fan of Jesse being the punching bag for pretty much any instant. He never really got any reprieve. It was always him. He maybe took a couple of wins, like Saul helping to get his house back uh, from his parents or whenever he got on Mike and Gus's good side, despite like Walt being completely paranoid of Gus. So that was some, you know, he had a few victories here and there but for the most part it was like Jesse torture porn I'm sorry it was like they're constantly beating him up and there was never 
any sort of victory for him in the end. I mean, it's like, okay, Jane dying, that was the big one. To me, that kind of set it off. He spiraled back into his drug addiction. His house became a crack den. He had the thing about the kid dying, you know, basically because Walt, Saul kind of set it up to poison him just to rile Jesse up. Then on top of that, the neo-Nazis <laughs> that Walt sent out, you know, his hitmen, to intimidate Jesse even more, they killed Andrea in front of his very eyes. I thought that was sick. On top of the fact that by the very end, Jesse was basically a slave working for those guys and for Todd. And so I was like, to me, those last two things, killing Andrea and then as well making him like a literal slave. I think that took it a little too far, especially because again, Jesse never really got any vindication for all the crap that he went through and i haven't watched el camino just yet but seeing the trailer even then i'm like wow this man just can't get a break so i feel kind of bad for him i guess and you know they didn't have to take it that far now okay as my final kind of point i want to talk about season five because i said season two was my favorite but season five is a close runner up just for how absolutely insane you know that season is and i mean you've got some great episodes like the train heist i wasn't expecting that one to be as good as it was and even just the setup for that episode like seeing the tarantula and the kid and you're watching that and the whole time you're wondering like okay how is this going to relate back to the rest of the episode until you get to the very end of that episode and finally you're like wow they pulled off the train heist hooray and then the little kid comes up and you're like oh no <laughs> Darn you, Todd. I love Todd. He's so sweet. He's kind of smart, but he's also kind of stupid at the same time. So I think uh, Jesse Plemons was a great addition to that cast as Todd. It's so crazy. But then even kind of that season five, mid-season finale, if you will, that was just crazy. You know, Hank, number one, <laughs> going to the toilet, all of a sudden digging through their stuff and seeing that Walt Whitman book and just having him starting to draw those connections there. And at that moment, I was like, oh my goodness. It was anxiety inducing for me because I've always, I was like, I've always wanted to make it to the end of the series. But it was one of those things where like, no, oh my gosh, you want Walter to go on with his operation. You want him to continue. You want him to be invincible. And so the fact that Hank was finally starting to put it together, I was just like, I was absolutely on pins and needles the entire time. <laughs> then that leads us to what was the back half of season five, which aired like a year later. And my goodness, those episodes, I think like 12, 13 and 14, to me, those were some crazy episodes, you know, like right when everything was starting to go down and oh my gosh, just the series of events. Like number one, Gomi dying, Gomez, I was absolutely distraught. I didn't know that his character died. So that was definitely just a huge, huge surprise for me. I was just in tears. And then Hank as well. I had like, out of all those spoilers that I had seen, I had absolutely no idea that Hank was gonna die. So I was just crying I was so sad. And to me, those episodes were so dramatic that that's what felt like the season finale or the series finale to me. You know, you kind of had everyone dying. It was very dramatic. And then those final two episodes kind of felt like an epilogue. It kind of felt like, I wouldn't necessarily say an afterthought. It was just kind of like, oh, hey, I'm sure fans want to know what happens to Walt after all this. So let's kind of give them that courtesy. So to be fair, out of all the good things that I had to say about Breaking Bad, I think those final two episodes as far as a series finale to me weren't extremely satisfying. I think I would have at least liked to have gotten some closure with like Skylar and Walt Jr. and with Marie for sure. You know, we get a little bit of her, you know, when she finds out that Hank is dead, but not a ton. So I wanted to kind of know like a little bit more from their perspective. But yeah, those last episodes are pretty much told from Walt's point of view. We get to see him going completely crazy. And I don't know, even just thinking about his death and the fact that he kind of just died by gunshot wound. I don't know. It, I'm like, I guess it was fine. But then thinking about kind of how he died from his own doing and he gave Jesse the option to just put him out of his misery. And it was like, Jesse decided not to kill him, but it wasn't out of the kindness of his heart. It was probably more so that Walt would just suffer kind of like a little, a little bit of payback there for Jesse. And then he bleeds out and dies. So I don't know, I wasn't like supremely satisfied with that ending. I think maybe I'll say it was good, maybe not great, but still 
I think to wrap it all up, I think they did a great job with season five anyway. So that is it guys. Now I am, I have started watching Better Call Saul. I am, I actually have finished season one this week, so I'm already on to season two. I'm gonna keep this spoiler free and I will most likely talk about Better Call Saul in a completely separate video once I finish that, just in case you, you know, you clicked here for Breaking Bad, not Better Call Saul. So I will just say as spoiler free as possible, really, really enjoying season one. And it is just so weird how, different of a show that Saul is compared to Breaking Bad. I was just gonna be like, okay, this is just Breaking Bad part two. So it takes some time to get used to it, especially when you go from Breaking Bad right into Better Call Saul. Like the moment that I watched the finale, I watched like the first probably like 15 minutes of Saul or maybe even more. And it's still, it's still got that Vince Gilligan flavor, but it is, it as it picks up, it's pretty different. It's a lot more creative as well. Some to its detriment, some to its benefit, but overall I'll see how it ends up panning out. I'll do a review on that later on. But yeah, that's it. That's all that I wanted to get off of my chest. I'm so happy that I finally got to talk about Breaking Bad and I had this really long script of stuff that I want to talk about. So that is it. Uh, please let me know what you thought, what you think about Breaking Bad. I mean, 15 years of this show and it's still just as amazing as it was when it came out. Uh, if you're going to talk about spoilers, maybe just put a little spoiler warning in the comment just so we're all clear here. But yeah, let me know what you thought. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this discussion. Please subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.